So say your book is this precious child. You wouldn't take a newborn baby and just throw it in the ocean and expect it to swim and not be eaten by sharks or drown. So why would you do that to your book? You wanna give it the time it needs to mature and develop so it can swim when you throw it out with the sharks, AKA the trolls on the internet. Do that, I'm going on live dance. Hi everybody, I promised you some singing and dancing at the beginning of all these. So there you go, you got it. Today we're gonna to talk about the three steps that you need to take before you put your book out into the world, before you go to, after an agent or a publisher and before you go get published. The thing that I find that scares the people the most is the idea of publishing the book. Are you scared of putting your book out in the world? You probably are. Most people I talk to are very scared of publishing and putting their book out into the world. And I get it. It makes sense because the internet is kind of like a playground full of bullies. And we think of our creative processes, we think of our books and the things that we put our creative energy into as our babies. So it can be kind of hard to take this little like baby of yours and put it on the internet with all these bullies who are going to tell you how bad you suck and how bad it sucks. I get that. But I also know that if you don't take this thing inside of you and tell it to the world, if you don't tell your story, if you don't stand in your voice, if you don't share your stories, something inside you dies. It's like anything left in dark hole festers and rots. I've seen it cause depression in people. I've felt it in depression in myself. You know, I have felt amazing depression lift off of my shoulders after a really good writing session. Now, it's not a replacement for professional therapy and professional help, but it really does make a difference. I, I see the way that a story held within can harm somebody from the inside out. And I see the way a story let out can empower and embolden somebody. So I wanna encourage you to move past that fear and to step into that power and that empowerment and know that if you go through the right steps, if you let your story develop, and you let your book be ready when you put it out in the world and give it the time it needs to get there and mature, then you can actually avoid a lot of that pain and fear from the bullies and the trolls on the internet. So then how do you do that? I like to think of a book like a baby. I mean, so many people talk about books like they're, they're you know, creative child, which is, you know, great and also problematic at some points because sometimes you got to kill your book and you wouldn't want to kill a child. But we'll, we'll use that metaphor now. So, so say your book is this precious child. You wouldn't take a newborn baby and just throw it in the ocean and expect it to swim and not be eaten by sharks or drown. So why would you do that to your book? You want to give it the time it needs to mature and develop so it can swim when you throw it out with the sharks, aka the trolls on the internet. So there is a three-step process to make sure that your book is fully developed when you put it out in the world. And it's a three-step editing process specifically. So the first step in that is you want to have a content edit. So content editing is kind of like the overall picture. Does this make sense overall? Does it have... Um, does, does it have a proper plot? Does it have a beginning, a middle, and an end? Is what you're trying to accomplish with this book, if you're trying to build a fantasy world or you're trying to change people's lives through a nonfiction book, what you're trying to accomplish with the book, is it accomplished? Is there a clear voice through the whole thing? Does your book make sense? Is it cohesive? A content edit is like overarching, big overall goals of is this book readable? Is it, does it make sense? Does it come together as a whole? So that's the first step. The second step is, and I have to look this up because I always get these two confused. Line editing and copy editing, I always get the two confused, but line editing is the next step. And line editing is literally going line by line and saying, does this make sense? Like, does this paragraph flow together? Is there ease in the reading of it? Is the word usage, are you, are you like verbose and adding all these fancy words to it just to sound fancy? Or could you cut through, the, through that and just make it more precise? It goes into, does this tone of how this person speaks here match the tone of how they speak there? Is there continuity in the way in which you use language, the way in which you use dialogue or don't use dialogue? Is there a flow to your words? So it's line by line. We're looking, okay, does this 
paragraph make sense? Does a sentence make sense? Does it go with the other sentences? Does it feel like a complete cohesive thought? So it's a line edit. Line by line, you're looking at it. So that's the second one of the three. The third part of the editing process is what I call copy editing and what other people call copy editing too, but I always, again, line editing, copy editing, I feel like they should be back. I feel like they're the opposite, but anyways, copy editing is when you look at and make sure that the periods are right in the right place. If you're using the right they, they're there, they're there, there, you're using the proper grammar, you're making sure that you have the right stylized, you know, all those stylized punctuation things you had to learn in college or in high school. It makes sure those are all in place. It makes sure that you have the right grammar, sentence structure, that just that overall final, really polished look. And oftentimes this is the big difference between a self-published book and a traditionally published book. This is the thing where people are like, what is it about this book that doesn't feel quite polished, quite even classy, some people say. And it's that final, last, really detail-oriented edit. So those are the three. You have a content edit overall and big, a line edit that looks at each line, and a copy edit that looks at really those precise details to make sure that it has this overall polished feel. Okay, so now that you have the three-step editing process, how do you find people to help you through those three processes? So. I highly suggest hiring someone professional, especially a line editor. So content and copy editing, I think that you can find other people, and we'll get to that next, but really important line editing is very important to have somebody who, who has an eye that is trained for those little details. And that will be the difference between your book feeling polished when it goes to an agent or a publisher to try to get them to buy it, or feeling polished before you put it on the world yourself through self-publishing. Now, yes, agents and publishers and hybrid publishers will provide you with this kind of quality line editing, and you can skip that if you're going the traditional route, but I highly still suggest having it because a publisher is more likely to take on your book and pay you for your book if it has that polished look and feel. You come across as more professional. It is more likely for you to sell it to a publisher or to somebody in the audience reading it if it has that polished look to it. Okay, so to find the editors to do that, now that I've convinced you, you need editors. To find the editors to do that, honestly, one of the best ways to do it is a quick Google search plus your genre, because there are hundreds and thousands of editors out there, all of them extremely qualified, but some of them not qualified for your genre. So do a Google search with your genre and you can find someone that just seems to be the right fit for your book. I could sit here and list five to 10 to 20 different friends of mine that do it, but they wouldn't necessarily be the right Edit, uh, editor for your book. For example, I do content editing through my Write Your Friggin' Book Already program and through individual one-on-one -on -one content editing of books. Now, whether your book would be the right book for me, I don't know. We'd have to sit down and have a conversation. If you want to do that, let me know. We'll have that conversation. But finding the right editor for your project is also just as important. So do a simple Google search and go with your gut. See what feels right for your book. However, I know that editing is expensive. It costs a lot of money to get your book edited. So if you want to try to cut down on some costs, one of the best ways that I've found is is finding that that friend of yours, you know, we, we all have that friend that like corrects your grammar in your text messages or on social media or is, is like calls themselves a grammar Nazi, which is, you know, a prob problematic term we shouldn't be using. But that person in your life, we all have them. That, that person who loves those precise details of grammar, find that person. Offer to take them out to dinner and have them read your book for you. Or clean their house in exchange for reading their book. Whatever you can do to exchange, give them something that you might have, that a skill they might need help with. Do that exchange with like that person in your life. I think that that's a great person to find. But if you don't know that person, joining groups like my Writer Squad group, I highly suggest talking to other writers, saying, hey, do you wanna read my book in exchange for your book? That's a great way to get a beta reader, someone to give you that first feedback. It's a great way to find someone who wants to exchange edits, and it's just a great way to feel less alone in this whole wide world of writing. Okay, so those are your tips on 
what you need to do to make sure your book is ready to be out in the world, the three editing step editing process that'll make sure that your book has developed fully enough to swim among the sharks and trolls on the internet, and also how to find a, an editor. And we can go more into depth on how to find an editor later, but that is a great place to start. And I would just love to see you all in my Writer Squad Facebook group looking for editors among you all. And I would love to help connect you with the right editors that work for your book and your project. So that is it for today. So I will see you all then. And until then, enjoy the conversation at the Writer Squad group at facebook.com slash group slash Writer Squad.